Welcome to the Alpha Training and Consulting's online training program. Today's question is, what is a T-statistic? And that's what we're going to answer for you today. Please keep this in mind. Should you ever need to prepare yourself for an ASQ certification exam, we love to help it, uh, students with uh, preparation on ASQ certification exams. We've been doing it for over 20 years and we've become very good at it. So please consider us should that need arise. All right, back to the T-statistic. Uh, in an earlier lecture, we talked about the Z-statistic, okay? And the Z-statistic told us if, uh, if something changed. For example, this is the example we've been using. We have distribution of original tumor growth rate. No treatment. This is just how the tumor growth rate is. Some people have higher growth rates. Most are in the middle here. Some has slower growing uh, growth rates. Okay, but then we add a treatment, and we want to know if the treatment is different. We want to know if it reduces the average growth rate. And so we use the Z statistic, and, it's, and if we put it in the computer, it spits out a p-value, which remember, p-value is the probability that you're wrong when you say something changed here. Yes, it did make a difference. That's the probability that you're wrong. Call that the p-statistic, if you'll recall. Okay. So we're doing the same thing with the T-statistic. Z and T are pretty much the same. The T-statistic and the Z-statistic are closely related. The difference is the T-statistic takes into account sampling error, and the Z-statistic does not. Normally, you will want to use the T instead of the Z when the sample size is less than 30. Less than 30. Uh, if it's 30 or greater, you can use the Z-statistic. And that's uh, pretty much the difference. Now, let me give you another bit of information concerning these inference studies and sampling errors, really what I want to focus on here. But this is a different problem. This is not the tumor growth rate, no treatment, tr uh, tumor growth rate with treatment. Okay, that, this is a different problem. This one here is, this is uh, lining people up according to their height, okay? I used that in an earlier example, and they created this distribution, okay? Now, um, let's say I live in a kingdom, and, and there's this king, okay? We have a problem. We have a king, and the king is unrealistic, and he believes that if people eat hamburgers, they will grow shorter. For whatever reason, he's a perverted king. He doesn't know what he's talking about, but uh, he brings you in as a statistician. He says, hey... Uh, I want to know if eating hamburgers makes people shorter. Well, you know from past experience, you either prove his hypothesis to be correct or he beheads you, okay? So that's the situation we're in here. So you go out there and uh, you feed the population hamburgers. Right after they get through eating, you get a sample. And you take the sample and, oh, no, the population average was five foot. Oh, no, it's five foot two. So you're thinking, oh, no, the people are growing taller. The king wants them to get shorter. And so you go out and desperation get another sample. Oh, great. Uh, this sample is five foot three. Then you go get another sample that's four foot eight. Finally, they're shorter. Okay. But all you're dealing with here is sampling error. Okay. This is the population average and you just went and got a sample. Even if hamburgers did impact growth, uh, change in height in people, it wouldn't right after they ate it. So that's the point. What happened here made no difference. Okay, over here, it did make a difference. The average shifted. This one, no shift. It's the same thing, nothing's changed, but the samples give us different values than the population average. Now, uh, why? Because this is from a million people lined up according to the height, everyone in the kingdom. No error here. But now I went out and got a sample size of 10. Oh, of 10? Do you really expect the uh, average of the sample to be equal to the average of the population when the population's a million and you just took a sample of 10? Of course it's not. That is error. There's an error between the sample average and the true average. It's called error. What is the error from? The error is from sampling. So we call that sampling error. So back here, remember, the difference is the T-statistic takes into account sampling error, 
the Z statistic does not. Now, there's two ways to reduce sampling error. One is increase sample size, 30 or over is a good start, okay? Or uh, more randomized sampling will also reduce sampling error. So there's only two ways to reduce sampling error. But uh, in the end, that's the difference between T and Z. Z does not take into account sampling error. Why? Because it uses such large sample size that you can ignore sampling error. But T is used when you use smaller sample size and sampling error does need to be taken into account, which is sample sizes of less than 30. That's the general rule out there. Okay. And by the way, there are three possibilities for numerical difference. Notice there's a numerical difference here from 5 foot to 5 foot 2 or 5 foot to 5 foot 3 or 5 foot to 4 foot 8. There's a numerical difference there. There's also a numerical difference between these two averages. So this is the problem. Uh, what is causing, this is always the question, what is causing the numerical difference? Uh, that's what it says. Three possibilities for numerical difference. Sampling error due to random variability, normal cause variability, significantly different, something actually changed. Okay, so that's a typo. I should have put two there, shouldn't have I? But uh, you get the point. And what are inference studies for? It's used to determine is one true or is two true? Is the numerical difference just due to sampling error or is there a significant difference? Really, that's what inference studies are designed to do determine which one of those would be the case. All right, here's an example. I thought we'd do an example today of a T statistic. A tire company suspects problems with one of their designs. To test the tires, they put them on an accelerated test machine. The numbers in distribution one column represent the number of miles to failure from a known good lot. The tires in distribution two column represents miles to failure on the questionable lot. Okay, and what do we have? 10 in each one, and so you have a total of 20 there, and you're supposed to have 30 or fewer uh, for the t-statistic. So this lies right in the t-statistic, and really what you're looking for is degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom is a number that you calculate from a formula. Okay, you calculate it from a formula. And it says these are the degrees of freedom. That you usually real easy. It may be sample size minus one. So maybe it's just 10 minus one is nine degrees of freedom. Uh, then there's one that's N1 plus N2 minus two. That's probably one we'd use for this one. 10 plus 10 is 20 minus two is 18 degrees of freedom. Really what we're looking here, you could say is the degrees of freedom. Uh, you use T if the degrees of freedom is less than 30. So in this case, the degrees of freedom would be 10 plus 10 is 20 minus 2 is 18, less than 30. So this would use a t-statistic, okay? So calculate the t-statistic for the two populations below and determine if distribution 2 is less than distribution 1. So I did that. I plugged it into my computer program. And what did I get? Uh, my alpha risk was 5%. Remember, that's the risk I'm willing to take. For this example problem, the p-statistic is below 5%, and uh, I did that work already. So there is a statistically significant difference between these two populations, is what we found. So that's an example of a t-statistic. If the degrees of freedom would have been 30 or over, I would have used the z-statistic. Well, hopefully that helped you. Uh, understand what the t-statistic is used for. Remember, it's a test to determine if averages have changed when you have a sample size uh, less than 30 and it's normally distributed data. Data. All right, there you go. Remember, keep us in mind should you ever need help with your ASQ certification preparation. Thank you and have a great day. Goodbye.